everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Divorced Woman's Guide podcast. How are you guys doing today? Can you believe that it is already the holiday season and 2022 is coming to an end? It just blows my mind. I feel like this year has gone by so incredibly fast. And as a result, many of us are just getting thrown into the holiday time period. And so I wanted to focus this week's episode all around how it is that divorced parents can put their kids first, or really put our kids in the center instead of in the middle this holiday season. And I especially wanted to talk about this because it's been coming up a lot in my community around how am I supposed to navigate this time period and the emotions of dread and stress are rampant. And first and foremost, obviously the holidays are a stressful time. It doesn't matter if you're divorced or not. However, for children of divorced or separated parents, the holidays tend to be especially challenging. And despite that reality, divorced parents, as well as parents that are separated and or considering divorce, do have the power to ease the tension, to help maintain a sense of sanity, to have grace and create joyful, happy holiday memories for your babies and for yourself for years to come. And the opportunity to create a positive experience out of what is often viewed as a negative one depends on your ability to plan ahead and what level of conflict you are or are not seeking to have with your co-parent. Because for our kids who are going through divorce, the holiday season does remind them that their family is now divided. And it's a reminder that sometimes they could potentially feel some loyalty conflicts, right? That's that tug of war that we try to avoid. And so when our kids may, you know, our kids might actually feel like they're being pulled in one direction or another. And when that happens, ultimately, guess what they feel? They feel disappointment because they know that they can't make either parent happy. And so our kids may worry that they're not going to have the holiday that they desire, that their needs aren't going to be met. And what we get to understand is the benefits that our children receive from creating new traditions, from creating new activities to help replace the memories of holidays in our past. And for those of you who have young children, well, they may be particularly sensitive and vulnerable during the holiday season post-divorce because young kids thrive with predictability and schedule and routine, and they crave it. And as you guys know, this time of year, that scheduling does typically go out the window. So first and foremost, you need to do everything in your power, not to intensify our kids' inner conflicts during this holiday season. So this is why it's so important for us to be flexible and understanding as you discuss what the holiday schedule is going to look like. Your kids are going to feel torn between these two worlds. So remember to show compassion if your kids are feeling stressed or worried. Don't take them out of it. Just stay in it with them and tell them how much you love them and remind them that it's totally normal to feel this way, to feel more stressed this time of year. And you get to be the one to help them navigate this rocky time period any which way that you can. So let me share with you what it is that I believe that you can do to create new positive holiday memories while you are co-parenting this holiday season. 
And so in my opinion, the first step is, is actually awareness, okay? Awareness that this time of year is stressful. And so your main goal needs to be to let your past grudges stay where they are in the past and to make sure that the memories that you focus on are not the ones from your past that are bad, but instead to focus on what are new, amazing, amazing memories that you can start creating with your kids and your families this year. When we hold on to angry emotions towards our former spouse, it typically makes us really bitter and resentful and angry. And our goal is to create new positive holiday memories for our kids because that's what we want them to remember. And all they want to feel is love. So look at your former spouse instead of through the lens as your ex Look at them as the parent of your child. It is the mother of my children. It is the father of my children, because that is going to enable you to come from a positive place, to be more responsible in your behavior and ensure that your kids have a really successful holiday. Whether you want to believe me or not, our kids are so intuitive. They're little sponges and they pick up on everything. They pick up on verbal and nonverbal signs of dissension or anger. So it's really important that you keep yourself in check as best you can. So that means to really pay attention to the words that you use. Try not to badmouth your ex in front of your children or even in front of them, meaning your ex, and to be the model of what respectful communication in front of your children look like. There's so much research out there that that demonstrates that kids adjust better to divorce when their parents minimize conflict and are more cooperative. So I want you guys to be able to go out this year and be part of the kids who are in, or in that place of being adjusted. So I want to share with you guys just five quick little ways that you can start creating some new positive holiday memories with your children. And these are all things that I have done. These are things that I teach with my clients and I work on with them. So number one is really focus on the time that you have them. Okay, not the time you don't, but the time you do and make it quality. Ensure that you are creating lasting, memorable, enjoyable activities and to not let the busyness of it get away from you. So anticipate and plan fun activities with your kids because all they want to do is hang out with you. All they miss is you and they want to feel loved and you get to be present with them. Number two, the way that we create positive memories for our kids is to let them have their feelings this time of year. So let them express their sadness, validate that it is okay to have these emotions and that you are there for them. Don't make them feel guilty about the time that they're spending away from you. So keep those comments in check. They do not need to know if you feel lonely without them. It is more important that they know that you're gonna be okay because they're gonna be thinking about you and taking themselves out of their own experience when they're celebrating the holidays with their other parent. Number three, please do not badmouth your ex to your children, right? Or make your kids be the messenger or have them spy on you where you're digging when they get home. Let your kids have their experience. Let them enjoy it, especially this time of year. I'm not saying don't ask them if they had fun, but don't ask digging questions because all it's going to do is put you in a bad mood, which is going to take your child or your children out of their experience. Number four is it's a great time to start new holiday traditions. So maybe playing games or watching movies or baking or listening to holiday music or going out and donating your time, you know, feeding the homeless. Maybe it's creating a special meal that you're going to deliver to somebody. Create new traditions for yourself, but it doesn't mean that they don't get to be created from past traditions that really worked for you guys. You just get to make them your own. 
And last but certainly not least is just to remember to, to be present and laugh and relax and smile and just be joyful with your kids this holiday season because I know that laughter is one of the best ways to change your mood into a positive one. So be sure to incorporate laughter into the holiday season because at the end of the day, we know that this time of year is not easy, but creating these new traditions is going to be worth every single bit of the effort that you're going to put in because it means that your new traditions that you create with your kids are going to endure the test of time and nourish everyone and their souls. This doesn't have to be a time of stressful, of stress or of overload or of overwhelm. What's important for you to remember is that the holidays are about your kids. It is about your experience with your kids. Okay, so if you are unable to be with your kids for one of the holidays or one of the time periods of the holidays, Please still remember to encourage your children to enjoy themselves and their other family and their extended family because they get to still have a really fun time. So you all get to embrace this holiday season, let go of your anger, and truly be thankful for what you have instead of what you have lost. Thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode. Don't forget to hit subscribe because you're not going to want to miss any of my upcoming episodes, especially throughout the rest of this year and in the beginning of 2023. If you are not a member of my Facebook group, The Divorce Rehab, be sure to stop on by and join our private group. I would love to see you guys there for community inspiration and support. And for those of you guys who are looking for any other type of support, you know you can go to my website, wendysterling.net, where you can find a ton of free downloads. You can get access to even past podcast episodes. I have so many rich opportunities for you guys to find there. I even created a brand spanking new quiz where you can find out what your superpower is after divorce. Be sure to head there to check it out. And I always love to hear your feedback about my podcast episode. So whatever nugget of information you got from this, whatever stood out as an aha moment, please share it with me. I always love hearing what resonates for you and how it is that I can better support you in your journey. So thank you guys again for tuning in this week, sending you so much love, light, and joy as always. Mwah. Bye everybody.